really haven't had time to be on the machine and record, so I decided to go ahead and do the skirt by hand, which is something I was doing a lot of anyway. So I just made the gathering stitches. Well, first of all, I put the two panels together. It was two side panels and a folded front panel, and they're just quickly stitched and going to run the machine over the rest of the stitches and then gathered up the top. Now it said just to gather. Uh, it didn't specify really much more than that. I think there's some more instructions in the the sew right section. So what I did is when I gathered, for me, I laid down all of the pleats in the back, moving towards the front. And then for the pleats in the front, one half is laying towards the center line and the other half is laying in the other direction towards the center line. And you wind up with this just kind of flat space in the center line, in the front the center line. Oh, here it is. Okay, so that's kind of how that worked. That looks like I missed a pleat right there. I'm going to have to make sure I fold that over. Okay, so at any rate, let me take this off the stand so you can see. That's how that turned out. And at this point, it's always best to try on the dress. Uh, you can see the crinoline peeking out down here because kids' dresses were shorter than women's dresses and so the 1860 civil war gown I made um, is made as if she were an adult and it would go all the way down to the floor and the dresses of course that are in her American Girl pattern collection are made for her as a child so her dress would not be as long so she will need a different crinoline or at least different petticoat for this particular skirt and the other ones that I made from her collection. Now, although I measured her beforehand and I am making the dresses that were meant for her measurements, it's still a good idea to check out the fit before you finish. So I'm looking at the fit here and this is quite a bit of crossover. It's really quite nice. So it's not going to be too small anywhere. The waist just fits well. Everything fits well down here. Nothing bulky up in the shoulders. No craziness. So I'm going to turn the hem. Turn the hem by one eighth. And then turn the hem again by one eighth. And that gives me my one quarter seam allowance. And it clean finishes that hem in the back. I'm not going to clean finish the inside of the dress. just want to point out that if I was making this dress to sell, I would most definitely clean finish the inside uh, with a zigzag or I would cover the inside lining and top stitch across there. But in this case, I'm not going to. And then so we can look real quick and see how the sleeves came out. They are gathered. I would like them to just be a little more puffy. And so what I'm going to do is actually put a bit of crinoline up there. I, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the dresses in the 80s. But if you remember little girl dresses in the 80s, they had that crinoline at the top of the sleeve to make them puff out. And a little bit of crinoline along the the hips or the waistline sometimes it was a longer crinoline and it just kind of made the sleeves puff out so i'm just going to artificially make her sleeves puff just a little bit um, i still haven't decided if i'm going to put the black trim around here but there on her uh, pattern instructions there's black trim lace that come well trim comes around there there are black bows on her sides and she's got a black sash. So I'm definitely going to do a ribbon for the sash and the bows on the sides, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the yoke up here. All right, so let me go to my sewing machine and go ahead and finish these edges and then go ahead and run the hem along the bottom. Here I am at Praxis Fiber Studio. 
Uh, it seemed like the best place to really lay out uh, Eddie's outfits. Gives me a lot better light, too, in space. Okay, so I have to see if I can remember how to say this right. I think it's Zouave. Zouave. Um, it's a style of dress that's based off of the military at that time. So uh, look up the 1860s military dress and you will see how closely related the cut and style, even down to the soutache braid, closely resembles um, the military dress of that style. And this was popular among ladies and obviously children's suits of the period. This particular pattern has come from the Pleasant Company Eddie Patterns, of course, and I wanted to do it in the blue wool that closely resembles Eddie's wool, uh, except I couldn't find the wool. I have a wool suit that looks really close to it. Couldn't find it. It's somewhere in storage. It'll probably show up this winter. But instead, I used one of my wool skirts because I had a hole in the skirt. And so I went ahead and used it for Eddie, and I'll patch that hole later. I think it turned out really nicely. Uh, and I think with the rest of my uh, wool items that I can no longer fit, this will make a really good use for it. I even was able to repurpose the uh, trim and the... Uh, lining from that wool skirt so that is lined. Now I started with this one because I was out in a photo shoot for Instagram and this is what I had her dressed in and it's just so much easier to leave this on than to take it off and put it back on. So I'm going to take off the layer so you can see what Eddie has on underneath. Now of course my purpose is to be as historically accurate as possible so I have Eddie first in her uh, split drawers and all the undergarments are from the Victorian unmentionables pattern by Thimbles and Acorn. So here she is with the split drawers. Just basic cotton with a little bit of uh, lace around the bottom. Uh, these are socks I just made by cutting up a sock and stitching up sides. And of course, the little flat shoes. I've been on a little shoe kick. I'm learning how to make shoes. Why not? Okay, underneath that, or over top of that, she has her chemise. And then a corded, um, oh boy, corded petticoat. And then she has a flat petticoat. And here's what I did for this one. Because I couldn't find um, the plastic boning to make the crinoline, and the zip ties were not long enough. The ones I could, had access to were not long enough to go all the way around the circumference of this bottom. So I've only got one boning piece in here. What I did is I stiffened the petticoat, basically, and I just used some Mod Podge to stiffen that petticoat and make that stand out a bit. This particular petticoat is made for a full length adult dress and the Pleasant Company dresses are made for children. So they are not full length. So I actually had to hike this one up in the air in order to get it fit. And then she has her um, corset on. Now normally of course the corset would be over top of the petticoat, but because I had to hike the petticoat up in the air, it's up there. So let me go ahead and put on the dress that you were watching me make. So this is Eddie's Christmas dress. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Uh, the air conditioning came on. Uh, if not, I'll voice it over. But this is Eddie's Christmas dress. And it's actually even a little shorter than the other skirt was. So her crinoline and petticoat are just peeking through a little bit. That's not too bad. Uh, this pattern is also one of the Pleasant Company patterns. And I did this, um, it's fairly true to the actual pattern. Her original dress is a green plaid, and I could not match that and decided I wouldn't even bother trying to match it. So I just went for a red plaid because I was filling plaid for Christmas. Now, uh, 
Basically, I omitted the trim around the yoke and the trim around the neck. I don't know. I still might go back and put that trim around the neck, but I'm definitely not going to put it around the yoke. I don't think I like what I had very much. So I just put one of the bows there, and she has the two bows on her sleeves. And in order to make the sleeves puffy, I did go back and put crinoline on the inside of the sleeves to make them puffy. And I did not secure the wide waistband around here because uh, I didn't have anything wider, but I am going to go pick up something to get a wider band. But I really like the way that looks. I really like how it poofs all the way around. I'm thinking if I make more of these Pleasant Company patterns, which I probably make them in different colors and kind of make them a little differently, I'm going to have to make a short petticoat that's appropriate for uh, this particular dress so it won't peek through. I also made her a pair of gaiters. Um, this gaiter came from Samantha's patterns, and gaiters were very popular back in the Civil War era as well. So I figured, you know, if, if Eddie was having a dress sewn for herself or she was making a dress for someone, if she had some extra fabric, then she probably would go ahead and make herself a pair of gaiters to cover her nice church shoes as she walked through the muddy streets of Philadelphia. This is the last of the outfits I've made for Eddie. And um, I'm moving out of the Civil War era, the mid-Victorian era, uh, into the 1870s and 1880s with the bustle period. Uh, I'll come back to this eventually because I still have to make clothing for uh, Mary Grace and I'll want to finish up Eddie's patterns with her jacket. So, but this will be it for her right now. Now, of course, this is the silhouette everybody's used to seeing on the Gone with the Wind and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we got our Peter Pan collar, our button placket, our drop sleeves, our round full sleeves here. Uh, the next time I make one of these gowns, I'll do the one with the bishop sleeves and the full under sleeves in it. And then, of course, my all-time favorite, the big bell skirt with the cartridge pleating. And I, I love a good cartridge pleat. Uh, <laughs> actually, I do. And the patterns with the fold lines make it so easy to put the cartridge pleating in. It takes a lot of fabric, even on the, the doll, to get the cartridge pleating, and I can only imagine how much fabric it would take to do the cartridge pleating for a full-size adult dress. But it is definitely one of my favorites. The petticoat was made to, for this particular dress, and see how nicely it sticks out. I think maybe next time, too, I'll get a few more petticoats. We'll see how many petticoats we can put under there, see if I can get six or seven petticoats underneath there. All right, that is it for Eddie. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about anything I've made in the video or Eddie, you can go ahead and put that down in the comments. And hopefully I'm getting better at this and I'm getting a little more in depth with actually showing you how I'm putting together patterns. At some point I'll use one of the patterns and do a complete walkthrough when I'm really comfortable with putting them together. Well, See you next time. Have a great day.